Hi, today I'm going to be talking about Stanley Tukey Williams. Um, you guys may know of him from the movie uh, Redemption. I'm sorry, I just finished watching the movie and it's really sad. <laughs> so I'm a little bit emotional. So excuse the emotion, I'm a very emotional person. Um, so try to excuse my facial expressions. <laughs> But yeah, Stanley Tookie Williams, I wanted to talk about it because um, he was from Shreveport, Louisiana, and that's where I'm from. And some of you guys may know him. Jamie Foxx played him in Redemption. I watched it when I was a kid. Um, but upon discovering that he was from Shreveport, I, re I wanted to um, get a different view on the movie as an adult. Uh, as a more experienced human being and knowing more and being more knowledgeable and wiser now that I'm 24 versus when it first came out. So Stanley Tukey Williams, <coughs> excuse me, was a Nobel Peace Prize nominee. He actually won an international peace um Mediator and one of the original founders and leaders of the Crip Gang in Los Angeles, California. So if you guys are from Shreveport, you guys know um, that the Cooper, the Cooper Road, I think the gang that's supposed to be over there is the Crips. I lived on the Cooper Road um, for a few years along with my family. Some of my family members, um, I was, I would say... I didn't know anything about gangs or I didn't realize that gangs actually existed just because of the type of family I came from. And being the youngest, I was kind of sheltered. Like I had four older brothers and sisters and they were very well known around the city and still are. Um, and then I had my dad and I was pretty much sheltered from a lot of bad things and growing up and discovering that how bad the world is like really sad but yeah that's probably why they I don't know I'm just guessing they have the Crips on a group of road in Shreveport because Tookie Williams was the leader and he started he found it he didn't find the first gang like gangs were around before they were blood gangs and probably all the um Mexican gangs and all that stuff around but he found it the um Crip gang in Los Angeles, California, like when he was 12, he moved from Shreveport to Los Angeles where his dad stayed. Um, I guess he met his dad for the very first time when he was 12. And then like, it's just really sad because his dad um, abandoned him again. Like after meeting him, <laughs> his dad just left him again. So, and his mom was raising him. And I can say from experience from having two brothers, <laughs> Sorry, y'all. From having two brothers that if my mom had to raise them by herself, they probably wouldn't be what they are today. Um, yeah, it's a really sad story. Uh, okay, wait, that's something else. Um, so, Tukey Williams... So Tukey Williams, um, he was accused, the reason why he was on death row, um, he was accused of murdering four people, but we never know like if that's really true because at the time there were people saying that he was high on PC in the back of the car and he would have never been able to do those things. Um, and after spending 23 years in on death row and after spending six years in the hole, like that's inhumane. Um, his lawyers started fighting for his civil rights, um, constitutional rights and stuff like the stuff they did to him in prison was inhumane, which is the sad part. Um, but he did a lot for the so-called black community. Um, the reason he said he started the gang was to, um, for survival. 
He was just trying to survive. Which is understandable because he didn't really have anyone. He was a small when he was smaller, he got bullied. Um, so he had to learn real quick to survive. You guys can go watch the movie, it's free on YouTube and it's probably free on some of your streaming devices and apps. Um, but I just watched it on YouTube. You can probably get it at a higher quality on a streaming app but the name of the movie is redemption um and yeah like Tukey Williams to me the message I get from him is hope like no matter what situation you're in there's always hope like he was on death row he had limited resources and he still was able to save lives to save um, kids from joining games and to help prevent gang violence. He did that all from death row. Not only death row, but he was in the hole. So his resources were really limited. Um, so there's, so the message to me is that there's always hope no matter what your situation is. Even if, even if, um, you're on death row, apparently. In the hole, like, most people go crazy in the hole. It's an inhumane situation. But he overcame those things. And he was still able to redeem himself and to help save lives. Like, look, I'm not even in prison. And I'm not saving anybody's lives. And I'm not stopping anything. But he's like a born leader. Or he became a leader through having just to survive, but he also um, felt like he wasn't living the first half of his life. The second half, he was living because even though he was in death row in um, the hole, because he was able actually able to help people and to bring joy into the world. Um, just go watch the movie, go watch the documentary about him it's a really good movie um and it just teaches you a lot and it will change your per perception on life well it, it has for me and maybe it'll do the same for you guys um i'm sorry to cut the video short i i have some other business to tend to i keep getting messages uh, <laughs> i have a lot of stuff going on right now um so if you guys 